Napoleon's decisive defeat at Waterloo, also known as La Belle Alliance, took place on June 18, 1815, and marked the end of 23 years of periodic conflict between France and the other European nations. But what were the reasons behind the battle? What led Napoleon Bonaparte to invade Belgium? And what was the strategy for the Battle of Waterloo? Stick till the end of this video to find all the answers. Hello, and welcome to History Fun Facts, where we present some of the most amazing facts you might not have heard. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you won't miss future updates. Without further ado, let's get straight into this. How did Napoleon rise to power? Napoleon Bonaparte, born in 1769 on the Mediterranean island of Corsica, climbed quickly through the ranks of the French military and established himself as a gifted and daring commander. Since 1792, France's revolutionary government had been fighting other European states in armed engagements. The Directory, a five-person organization that had ruled France since 1795, allowed Napoleon to lead an invasion of England the next year. Napoleon judged that France's naval forces were not yet prepared to face the greater royal navy of the United Kingdom. In a series of conflicts in Italy in 1796, Napoleon led a French force that beat the bigger troops of Austria, one of the country's main adversaries. In 1797, France and Austria signed the Treaty of Campo Formio, which gave the French territorial gains. He was awarded the title of First Consul and became France's senior political figure after taking power in a coup d'etat in 1799. During the French Revolution, Napoleon climbed through the ranks of the French army, gaining control of the French government in 1799 and became emperor in 1804. He built his dominion over Western and Central Europe through conflicts. Napoleon's rule, and France's dominance in Europe, ended at the Battle of Waterloo, in which the British and the Prussians destroyed Napoleon's soldiers. What were the reasons behind the Battle of Waterloo? A few factors led the French Emperor to attack the Allied forces of Europe. Don't worry, we'll cover each and every aspect of the battle. Napoleon's catastrophic invasion of Russia in 1812 resulted in his army being forced to flee and suffering tremendous fatalities. During the Peninsula War, the Spanish and the Portuguese, with the help of the British, pushed Napoleon's soldiers out of the Iberian Peninsula between 1808 and 1814. Napoleon's army was destroyed by a combination of Austrian, Prussian, Russian, and Swedish forces in the Battle of Leipzig, also known as the Battle of Nations, in 1813. Napoleon returned to France, where coalition troops took Paris in March of 1814. Napoleon, who was in his mid-40s by this time, was compelled to relinquish the throne on April 6, 1814. He was exiled to Elba, a Mediterranean island off the coast of Italy due to the Treaty of Fontainebleau. Napoleon left Elba and sailed to the French mainland with a company of over a thousand followers less than a year later on February 26, 1815. He returned to Paris on March 20th when adoring crowds greeted him. Did you know? The Unified Kingdom and the Seventh Coalition opposed Napoleon's return to power, although they weren't entirely united initially. Furthermore, many of the strongest British soldiers were still fighting in the War of 1812 in America. The new monarch, Louis VIII, fled and Napoleon launched what would become known as the Hundred Days War. On March 25th, Great Britain, Prussia, Austria, and Russia signed an alliance contract promising to keep 150,000 soldiers in the field until Napoleon was deposed. Shortly after, it was determined that the Allied forces, numbering over 794,000 men in total, would meet around the French border and march on Paris along convergent routes. The time it took the Russians to cross the Rhine would push the invasion back until early July, giving Napoleon time to prepare his fortifications. Napoleon commanded approximately 160,000 first-line troops, but many were sent to the border defense. When Napoleon returned to France, a coalition of allies, the Austrians, British, Prussians, and Russians, began to prepare for war against the French Emperor. Napoleon created a new army intending to strike first, destroying the allied armies one by one before they could combine against him. Napoleon's soldiers marched into Belgium in June 1815 camping alongside separate armies of British and Prussian troops. On June 16, Napoleon beat the Prussians, led by Gebhard Leberecht, in the Battle of Ligny. On the other hand, the French could not annihilate the Prussian force. On June 18, Napoleon led his 72,000-strong army against the 68,000-strong British army, 
which had taken up a position south of Brussels near Waterloo. The British Army, which included Belgian, Dutch, and German forces, was led by Arthur Wellesley, Duke of Wellington, who rose to fame during the Peninsular War fighting against the French. Napoleon made a significant miscalculation by delaying the attack until midday to allow the saturated terrain to dry following the previous night's thunderstorm. The delay allowed Blucher's remaining men, estimated to number in the tens of thousands, to march to Waterloo to join the combat later that day. As a result of this miscalculation, a botched attack on the chateau started, absorbing growing numbers of French forces while pulling defenders away from Wellington Center. The conflict was restricted to Hogemount for an hour and a half. At 1 p.m., the Emperor saw a mass of soldiers appearing from the forests of Chapelle St. Lambert, six miles or ten kilometers to the northeast. He was ready to order the big battery of 80 guns near La Belle Alliance to cannonade the enemy center. He quickly discovered it was Friedrich Wilhelm, Freiherr von Belo IV's 30,000 men, which was being pursued by the remainder of the Prussian army. Grouchy received a hasty dispatch. Grouchy received a hasty dispatch directing him to rejoin the main body of the French army and confront Belo, but the word didn't arrive until 5 p.m. Grouchy had been hopelessly entangled with Johann Adolf Thielmann III's corpse at Wavery at that moment. Even if he had been free to march immediately, he would have arrived to Napoleon long after dusk. Napoleon remained optimistic that he could beat Wellington before the Prussians arrived in force. Two cavalry divisions were dispatched to form a screen in Bailo's route, with a corps led by Georges Mouton, Count de Lebeau, stationed behind them. Those preparations were finished by 1.30, a half hour after the artillery near La Belle Alliance started to fire. 18,000 troops, under the command of Ney and Drouet, pushed on the Allied center. The attack had no cavalry, so the British infantry confronted Drouet's troops with full force. Many attackers formed three divisional columns, every 200 troops wide and 24 to 27 ranks deep. As a result, they could not properly return fire and were extremely susceptible to artillery. Papalot was seized, while La Haye Saint was assaulted but not captured. Henry Paget, Earl of Uxenbridge, after the first Marquis of Anglesey, Wellington's cavalry commander, now hurled his riders on the disorderly French columns and numerically inferior cavalry approaching from behind. The French retreated in excellent order from Papillot, but they could not stop the German cavalry elsewhere. Lord Edward Somerset and Sir William Ponsonby's cavalry, buoyed by their victory, disobeyed Uxenbridge's command to retire and rush the French lines. Ponsonby was killed, and 2,500 English horsemen, roughly a third of those who took part, died in a fairly ineffective battle. Despite Napoleon's best efforts against the British, the advent of the Prussians swung the tide against the French. The outmanned army of the French ruler withdrew in confusion. According to some estimates, the French suffered more than 33,000 losses, killed, wounded, or taken prisoner, compared to more than 22,000 for the British and the Prussians. During the Belgian War, Napoleon was said to be tired and ill, and he made tactical blunders and acted indecisively. He was also chastised for picking inept commanders. How did the French collapse? Ney squandered the last forces of his cavalry between 5 and 5.30 p.m. in a desperate attempt to penetrate the British lines. Ney eventually ordered the 6,000 troops laying idle less than a mile from Wellington's front to go forward at 6 p.m. after the final horse onslaught. Heavy artillery and small arms fire were used against them and they were quickly forced back with 25% casualties. Ney ultimately seized La Haye Saint after receiving new orders. Just 300 yards, or 270 meters distant, a battery pushed up to the farm and began wreaking havoc on the British center. Napoleon withdrew to Paris on the morning of June 21st, abandoning his shattered army and surrendering the next day. The French army began a hesitant march south of the Loire River on July 5th and 6th, where it was eventually dissolved. On July 7th, the Allies stormed Paris and Louis VIII was reinstated the next day. Napoleon traveled to the west coast, where he surrendered to the commander of the HMS Bellefon on July 15th after his attempts to flee to the United States were foiled by a British naval force. He spent the rest of his life in exile on the island of St. Helena. Napoleon abdicated for the second time on June 22nd, 1815. He was banished to the isolated, British-controlled island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean in October of that year. On May 5, 1821, at the age of 51, he died there, most likely of stomach cancer. 
On the island, Napoleon was buried. His bones, however, were returned to France in 1840 and entombed in a vault at Les Invalides in Paris with other French military commanders. In the end, Napoleon was a heroic symbol for his nation, but he failed to beat the Allied forces at the Battle of Waterloo for multiple reasons. Yet, history calls him a corrupt individual who couldn't see that his actions were dangerous and damaging. What do you think about Napoleon's strategy at the Battle of Waterloo? Let us know in the comments section. That's all for today. If you found this video interesting, please give it a huge thumbs up. And don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. And thanks for watching the video.